Hi, Amber. Nice to see another set from you. Uh, you will have an extra bonus set after this one. So you've got one more set of essays to complete. And then we'll take it from there and see where you're at, okay? So why don't we get started with this one? Uh, this is the letter to the company that mm, did your house move. Okay. Dear Sir, Madam, I am writing to complain about the moving services provided by your business. Last, Saturday, last Sunday at noon, I used your transportation services to transport my home appliances and equipment from PEI to Nova Scotia, Canada. Since it was a long ride, I hired three of your drivers so that everything could fit and I did not have to worry about space. Once they arrived, I could not believe what... Hmm. I could not believe what happened. Um, that had just happened is a little awkward. It's as if something had happened before i don't know it's very strange this use of tense here so you really should have just stuck to simple past for both once they arrived i could not believe what happened all the boxes i labeled as fragile because they contained my blender and glassware were at the bottom of the rest of the containers everything inside shattered not only that but my 70 inch tv screen broke as well okay um this, so I would change a few things in this paragraph. I already told you that I thought this first sentence was awkward. Um, I would have probably preferred a different expression to, to kind of fit what follows a little better. So it's not once they arrived that this happened. It's they packed all the stuff in the truck and then you realize that these things broke. So this isn't even accurate. So the whole sentence doesn't really quite fit. Um, so I think something that would have made a little more sense is something like what transpired afterwards was shocking or what occurred afterwards was unbelievable. Okay. Um, that would have made more sense because then you say that you say all this. Now I would have also changed around this next sentences. Um, this was awkward grammar. So how about I labeled all my boxes as fragile because they contained my blender and glassware. Uh, um, okay. And then you've got the rest of this. We're at the bottom. So I thought this whole construction was rather awkward. Um, you could have said all of the boxes labeled fragile, um, because they contained my blender and gl mm, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's all right. All the boxes labeled fragile. It works a little better because it means that were labeled fragile. And that for me works a little better. I probably would have done this um, a little differently. So I probably would have broken it down into pieces that are more easily understood. Um, so I probably would have said something like, um, I had numerous boxes labeled fragile which contained my blender, glassware, and other breakable items, period. To my shock, they were placed at the bottom um, of the, they were placed below everything else in the truck, shattering everything inside. Okay, so I would probably use some constructions like that. I think they feel a little like they flow a little better. Um, not only that, but my 70 inch T. Okay, that's fine. Let's continue. Because I paid for, no. So look, you either, you paid for premiums and premium insurance, or you paid a premium insurance fee. It's either one or the other. I paid for insurance or I paid a fee. Does that make sense? So you have to choose one of these. I request, hmm, this is awkward, not I request that I am refunded. How about I request a refund for the damages caused by your employee's lack of judgment and responsibility? Okay. Um, 
because this is actually subjunctive. If you really want to use this passive voice, it would have to be, I request that I be refunded. But I know that can sound a little awkward and that can be a little tricky. So you could have just, again, used the subjunctive and said, I request uh, a refund. It's not subjunctive in this case, but that might make your life a little easier. I request a refund for the damages. Otherwise, it would be, I request that I be refunded. I have attached the receipt for the television and the blender I bought along with my bank account information. Additionally, I suggest you train your staff on how to care and deliver the boxes to avoid, you don't need a comma here, to avoid this incident from happening to other people. I hope to hear from you soon. Regards. All right, remember, when you write Dear Sir or Madam, you don't know the name of the person you're writing to, and so your ending should be yours faithfully, okay, not regards. Um, I This was all fine. I don't love this. I hope to hear from you soon. You are writing a letter of complaint. I'd like the language here to be a little firmer, okay? So you have to be a little more specific in a case like this. It should be something like, um, um, if I have not heard from you in one week's time, I will speak to my lawyer regarding this issue. Or uh, if you have not responded to this letter by the 15th of March, um, I will reach out uh, by phone to, I don't know, provide further clarification, something, or to pursue this matter differently, something, all right? This is a little too general, and it's not creating this kind of sense of urgency that you're trying to do, so I would have preferred something different there, okay? So on the whole, it's fine. Again, I feel like there are some things that could be a little better, um, but I would say it's a, it's a good letter overall. Um, just some awkwardness, I would say. So for me, I guess the area uh, that needs improvement in this letter is some grammatical awkwardness, some syntax issues that I felt could have been a little better. All right, let's move on to your father staying home. Why are father staying home while women are working? Is this good or bad? Let's see. Lately, the number of stay-at-home fathers taking care of their toddlers while mothers go to work has increased. This essay agrees with the statement that this is a positive development because it gives fathers the opportunity to spend more time with their children and allows mothers to go back to the workplace. Okay, what are the reasons? It's not enough to just agree. You need to say there are numerous societal reasons behind this change. Okay, because if I read this and I had no idea what the essay topic was, if I didn't have it in front of me, I would assume that you are just going to cover the reasons why you agree. That's not what the essay has asked you. The essay has asked you also to analyze the reasons behind it. Okay, so your, your uh, introduction is a really, really important kind of way to show the examiner, yes, I have understood what you've asked of me, and yes, I will proceed to cover all areas of the task in this essay. Okay, so a really nice, clear way to do that is address in the essay, uh, in the introduction. So this essay will analyze why, or this, anal this um, essay will analyze the reasons behind this trend and agree with the statement that it is a positive statement, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, that's one way to do it. Let's continue. To begin with, fathers are able to spend more time with their offspring. Offspring is always singular. And to be quite honest, I don't really like the word offspring for human children. It's fine for like ducks and chicks and cows and, you know, other animals. But typically, it sounds a little strange when you use it with humans. Just say children. It's fine. There are some words where, honestly, there are very few alternatives for them. Children, in my opinion, is one of them. So you could use the word children and you're fine. So to begin with, fathers are able to spend more time with their children if mothers go to work instead of them. This creates an unbreakable father-son bond, you mean here, not bone, an unbreakable. And why are you limiting it just to sons? Why couldn't it be father-child? So father-child bond, which has numerous advantages on developing the child's character and skills. For example, a study by the UN demonstrated that children whose fathers were involved at home full-time, don't need a comma here, acquired more critical thinking and communication skills than those whose fathers have jobs. Thus, it is conclusively clear that toddlers benefit from having their fathers at home rather than working, okay? Furthermore, this change 
is not only careful with your typing, but, uh, is beneficial not only for children but for their mothers too, as it permits them to go back to work. This is largely a positive outcome because many women quit their jobs and professional goals after having children. Over the years, most of them regret making that decision. In Latin America, for instance, it is common for mothers to take maternity leave and never return to work. Most of them regretted that choice eventually. Therefore, it is possible to stay beyond doubt that fathers agreeing to stay home and take care of their toddlers so that mothers can keep on working is a positive development. All right, uh, Microsoft Word did not love this sentence. Um, I'm not really sure what it suggests. Tell us to stay beyond doubt that fathers agreeing to stay home and take care of their toddlers so mothers can keep on working is a positive. I'm okay with it. I mean, Microsoft didn't really love it. It's a little challenging, but it's, it's okay. I think it's fine. To conclude from the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that fathers staying at home to watch after their children is a step in, not on, in the right direction, since it gives them the opportunity to share with their children while providing mothers to work again. Not providing, that's the wrong word, while allowing mothers to work again. All right, so it's really interesting because you did essentially what I was afraid of. You, you ignored the first question, and you can see it really very clearly right here. This is a two-question essay. And so the way you're supposed to treat it is, I mean, one of the best ways to do it, as far as I'm concerned, is literally having a paragraph for the first question and a separate paragraph for the second question. Okay, so it could have been a, what are the societal changes that have allowed this shift to occur, both for the men as well as for the women. You don't want to look at it kind of one-sided. But you want to see what has changed for women and what has changed for men that has made this happen. And then you want to talk about whether it's positive or negative, okay, in a separate paragraph. So while this essay was really good in very many ways, you would definitely lose marks for task achievement because you only answered half of the essay. You didn't really answer the reasons for this, okay? Um, you basically just talked about why it's a benefit and never what has happened that it has allowed this to be an okay thing. All right, so that's something I want you to work on. I need you to really uh, more tightly follow the questions in the essay more closely and, uh, you know, kind of structure your essay around the way the question is written, okay? So as I said in the beginning, you will have another essay uh, set to, to complete for us. So go ahead and get that started. We'll meet back here with that, okay? So best of luck to you.